What is the minimum number of moves needed to solve any scramble of the Rubik's Cube? This question stunned mathematicians for years, and this magical number was to be called God's number. So how do we eventually find this magical number? Well, today I'll take you on the 30 year long journey that took us there, full of contributions from mathematicians, researchers, and puzzle lovers worldwide. So if I ask you the question, how can we find the minimum number of moves to solve any scramble? Well, you might say, oh, just go through all 43 quintillion possible scrambles and find the least number of moves needed for each one and we'll be done. Well, we certainly couldn't have checked all 43 quintillion scrambles, right? Well, we actually did. <clears throat> in a very efficient way, though. This 30-year-long journey started back in the 1980s. Back then, the computational power was a small fraction of what we have now. It was literally impossible to check every solution to every scramble, which forced us to use reduction. Reduce a hard problem into several easy problems you'll see that this theme appears and reappears throughout the entire story. Before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's start from the beginning. In the early days, one overarching method was used to try to determine God's number, bounding. Mathematicians found lower bounds and upper bounds to God's number, and over time, better and better bounds were found, which increased the lower bound and decreased the upper bound. Eventually, when the lower bound meets the upper bound, we find God's number. Finding a lower bound to God's number is quite simple, actually. Let's start off with assuming that the lower bound of God's number is two moves. We knew this Rubik's Cube has a huge number of possible scrambles that is more than 43 quintillion. Each scramble can be mapped to a unique scrambling algorithm. Going back to our previous assumption that God's number is only two, with any permutation of two moves or less, how many unique scrambling algorithms can there be? Well, if the length of the algorithm is zero moves long, then there exists one algorithm, or the solved state. If the length of the scrambling algorithm is one move, then there exists 18 algorithms. If the length is two, then there exists 18 possible moves for the first move, and only 15 possible moves for the second move. Remember that two consecutive moves cannot be on the same face. This amounts to 289 unique scrambles of length less than or equal to 2. Thus, since there are 43 quintillion different scrambles, last time I checked, 43 quintillion is just a little bit higher than 289. Well, thus there are 43 quintillion possible scrambles, God's number must be greater than 2. If you repeat this process, you'll eventually find that the set of algorithms capped at 17 moves long will reach the threshold of 43 quintillion. Therefore, the lower bound of God's number is 17, if not larger. But hold on, wait a minute. Each of these results were actually overcounted. Let me explain. Let's take a closer look at the sequence of two moves here, R and L. If we reverse these two moves, L first and then R, we would get the same sequence. Moreover, you cannot turn either one of these two parallel sides for your third move reducing the number of possibilities for the third move down to 12. Thus, the greater bound of God's number could actually be higher than 17. Mathematicians were able to use pretty basic computer programs to accurately determine the number of possible scrambles for anything up to 17 moves, which turned out to be less than the 43 quintillion threshold. Thus, the lower bound for God's number was successfully raised to 18. Whoa, we did it! Well. We actually known this result, that the lower bound is 18 since the late 1970s. So you might ask, why isn't God's number simply just 18? Well, we only showed that there are at least 43 quintillion possible scrambling algorithms with 18 moves or less, but many of these algorithms produce the same scramble. Thus, some of the 43 quintillion scrambles may actually never be reached with scrambles of only 18 moves long. Nevertheless, 18 is still a wonderful lower bound for God's number. Alrighty, shifting gears now, let's take a look at getting an upper bound for God's number. Unlike the lower bound, finding an upper bound is much more difficult. 
rather than saying that there exists some scramble that takes at least some number of moves to solve, we have to prove that every possible scramble can be solved in under some number of moves. In 1981, Professor in Mathematics, Morwen Thistlethwaite, achieved a breakthrough of the upper bound for Gauss number. He reduced it to 52 moves with Thistlethwaite's algorithm, which was published in Scientific American later the same year. He attempted to divide this giant problem into several subproblems. His algorithm works by restricting the scrambles into a subgroup theories of scrambles that can be solved using a certain set of moves. He created five groups, G0, which contains the moves L, R, F, B, U, and D. This group contains all possible positions of the Rubik's Cube. G1 contains the moves L, R, F, B, U2, and D2, which means for the U and D faces, only double turns are allowed. Positions in G1 can be solved using only these moves. G2 contains the moves L, R, F2, B2, U2, and D2. Positions in G2 can only be solved using these moves as well. And G3 contains the moves L2, R2, F2, B2, U2, and D2, meaning that positions in G3 can be solved using only double turns. And then, going from G3 to G4, we only use these double turns and solve the cube into the solved position, which is only one position. Using Thistlethwaite's strategy, the cube is solved by moving from group to group using only moves allowed in the current group. For example, from a G0 scramble, the cube could be reduced to a scramble in G1 using only the G0 set of moves. Once in G1, quarter turns of the U and D faces are no longer allowed, and using G1 set of moves, the cube can be further reduced to a scramble in G2, and so on. This continues until G4, which is the solved cube. Using this reduction method, Thistlethwaite was able to exhaustively calculate the maximum number of moves needed to bring any state in G0 to a state in G1, any state in G1 to G2, G2 to G3, and G3 to G4. The sum of these values formed a new upper bound for God's number, and that is 52 moves. Solving methods like Thistlethwaite's algorithm are designed with two things in mind. It has to be move efficient, and it has to be really computer friendly. Once the cube is at a position in G1, using the set of moves in G1, the previous progress will remain undisturbed, meaning that the cube will never revert back to a state in G0. Unlike most speed solving methods, whose algorithms usually start by disturbing previous progress, then restoring it in a different way at the end. That's a lot of wasted moves as compared to Thistlethwaite's algorithm. Then you might ask, why is such a reduction method computer friendly? Well, take a look at the number of cases in each group. It seems that during any of the four stages, the amount of possible scrambles is reduced by a factor of 10 to the fifth. When compared to trying to reduce all 43 quintillions possible scrambles to the solved case directly, this way is much easier and faster for computers to check. Each group also has a limited set of moves, which greatly reduces the number of checks needed by the computer. And if you're enjoying this video, consider subscribing to the channel. As a small creator, it really helps a lot. Almost a decade later, in 1990, researchers Hans Klustermann improved upon the upper bound using a slight variant of Thistlethwaite's algorithm. Klustermann redefined Thistlethwaite's groups with a major change for G3. G3 is now the subgroup of G2 in which all U cubies are in the U face, D cubies are in the D face, and the U D slice cubies are in the U D slice. The maximum number of moves in these stages are 7, 10, 8, and 18 respectively, for a maximum total of 43 moves. However, in the worst case scenarios of stages 3 and 4, Klusterman checked that no position actually required a combined total of 26 moves. A cancellation of one move could be arranged between the two stages. Thus, stages 3 and 4 actually require a maximum of 25 moves, which brings the new total bound of Gauss number to be 42 moves. A few years later, in 1992, mathematician and cube enthusiast Erber Kosiemba improved upon Thistlethwaite's algorithm by reducing the number of intermediate groups down to only two. 
G0 contains all the possible combinations of the Rubik's Cube, and the moveset of G0 still contains all possible moves. However, G1 has been redefined as U, D, L2, R2, F2, and B2. And group 2 is now defined as the solid state. So essentially, Kosieva is skipping over two of the intermediate groups. Using this improved algorithm, Kosiemba found that most solutions could be solved in only 21 moves, but there was no proof that it would always do so. Although it seems like Kosiemba failed, his algorithm would prove to be a key breakthrough in this journey. Oh, one more thing to note, Kosiemba also programmed the application Cube Explorer, an open source program designed to compute algorithms and solutions to the cube. This program was widely used amongst many of these researchers in their journeys toward God's number. You can download a version of the program for yourself too, actually. Using a similar method, Michael Ray came up with his own groups later the same year. G0 stays unchanged. G1 and G2 are quite drastically changed to shorten their movesets, and G3 is the solved state. Advancing through stages 1, 2, and 3 takes at most 8, 13, and 19 moves, respectively. Additionally, Ray verified that any sequence of moves used in stage 2 must end in either an F or an R move. He also checked the positions requiring 19 moves in stage 3, only 24 of such cases in total, finding that they may be solved in 19 turns starting in either F2 or R2. Thus, one move is cancelled between stages 2 and 3, when stage 3 requires 19 moves. Raid reduced the upper bound of God's number down to 39 moves. Raid also mentioned that his next step was to reduce the figure for stage 3 by allowing other turns, as in the second stage of Kosienla's algorithm. Notice how everyone's working constructively building upon each other's ideas. Two days later, Dutch researcher Dick Winter further reduced the upper bound with the help of a farm of workstations, also known as a system of supercomputers. Combining Kosiemba's algorithm with a result from Hans Boosterman, Winter reduced the upper bound to 37 moves. Remember how Raid said he was going to analyze Kosiemba's algorithm to reduce the figure for stage 3 of his own solution? Well, it paid off. In 1995, Raid made a tremendous breakthrough. Rather than adapting Kosiemba's algorithm for his own work himself, Raid directly built upon Kosiemba's work, as back in 1992, Kosiemba wasn't able to obtain a proven result with his algorithm. Notice how the last turn in stage 1 is always a quarter turn of either F, R, B, or L. By choosing the direction of this turn properly, we hope to avoid the positions requiring the maximum number of moves in stage 2. Using computer programs, the two phases have been fully calculated and their maximum lengths were found to be 12 and 18 moves respectively. Raid verified that no two positions at distance 18 face turns differ by F2, R2, B2, or L2, so these positions may be avoided. This reduces the maximum number of moves required for stage 2 to 17 moves. This results in a new upper bound of merely 29 moves. Using large amounts of computing power, Raid proved that the famous Super Flip Scramble required a minimum of 20 moves to solve just a few days after his discovery of the new upper bound. This method was inspired by Kosiemba's algorithm. The Super Flip is a special scramble where all corners of the cube are solved in their respective positions but all edges are flipped. This case is notoriously known to be very difficult using the CFOP method, though it is easier with other methods such as Rue. Nevertheless, Raid has proven that the new lower bound for Gauss number is 20 moves, but he conjectures that the actual lower bound is higher. Michael Ray's 29 move upper bound was undisturbed for an entire decade before researcher Sovu Radu managed to lower it in 2005. Building upon Ray's argument, Radu proved that all positions of distance 29 can be avoided using set theory, and the upper bound was further reduced to 28. A year later, Radu reduced the number of moves required for stage 1 of Kosiemba's algorithm from 12 down to 11 moves, creating a new upper bound of 27 moves. 
His calculations were complicated, so I'm going to leave them out of this video, but of course, you can find the link to his work in the description. Using similar methods incorporating set theory and group theory, in 2007, Dan Kunkel and Gene Cooperman of Northeastern University brought the upper bound down to 26 moves. Then, in 2008, combinatorial mathematician Tomas Hokiski brought it down to 25 a month later. Using quite a bit of computer bashing, Rokiski and John Wellborn reduced it to 23. Then, finally, a few months later, the pair reduced the upper bound of God's number down to 22 moves. In July of 2010, after three decades of hard work, we've finally done it. A group of four mathematicians, namely Tomas Sokiski, Herbert Kosiemba, Morley Davidson, and John Dethridge, lowered the upper bound one final time to 20, matching the lower bound of Gauss number. The fundamental principle behind this method was built upon Thistlethwaite's method and Kosiemba's algorithm from almost 30 years back. Here, Gauss number was pinpointed by first partitioning all possible scrambles into 2 billion sets of 19 billion positions each, then reducing the number of sets that needed to be checked to 55 million using symmetry and set covering. Lastly, they only found solutions of length 20 or less, rather than spending extra effort to find the most optimal solutions for each case. Then the group wrote a program that solved a single set in about 20 seconds, and used about 35 CPU years of idle computer time to find solutions to all the positions in each of the 55 million sets. Or in simpler terms, they intelligently bashed every single case. Later, as computers had increasingly more computing power, the number of scrambles solvable by each move count were calculated and summarized in this table shown right here. And there it is. The question that has puzzled mathematicians for decades has finally been solved. We've managed to match the upper bound of God's number with the lower bound of God's number, meaning that we finally pinpointed God's number at 20 moves. Not gonna lie, after all of this, Kosyama could honestly be crowned as the MVP. Most valuable puzzle solver. The Rubik's Cube is a deceptively simple, yet extremely difficult puzzle. And 20 was called God's number because, as the name suggests, you'd have to be an omniscient deity to be able to calculate these optimal solutions for the cube. This result also means that any Rubik's Cube combination can be reached by scrambling the cube within 20 moves. Thus, when people say, I'm gonna scramble the cube for 10 minutes straight so that it's harder for you to solve, no, that's actually not true because they're simply cycling through pre-existing combinations. Well, thank you so much for watching this mini documentary on God's number. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, consider clicking that like button and subscribing to the channel. It really helps a lot. And until I see you in the next video, happy cubing and have fun.